Good evening and welcome to Hashtag We Are The Church, our annual program bringing together our church family right across the South Pacific for a night of worship, prayer, uplifting music and inspiring stories. And we've certainly got lots of wonderful stories to share with you tonight. I'm delighted to be joined by Fiona Lelio Tiatia. Welcome, Fiona. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much, Pastor Glenn. Thanks for having me share this space with you at hashtag We Are The Church. Bulavanaka, talofa, maloa, lele, kia orana, kia ora, and hello to our Pacific, South Pacific division, our, our families that are tuning in um, across the South Pacific. Um, but yeah, so my name is Fiona Lelilio Tiatia. I'm of Samoan descent, uh, and I was born in New Zealand and raised in Australia. So we did the, the usual Polynesian migration trail. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's an honour to be here. I have four children. Uh, twins were the eldest. They're eight years old. I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old four who keeps me on my toes. Um, I've got a husband, one husband. So praise God for that. One and done. Um, but other than that, it's, you know, it's uh, good to be here. And professionally? Professionally, I've got almost 20 years um, experience in the media and communications industry, uh, which part of which was involved in Mums at the Table. Yeah, because tell us a little bit about that, because you're a mum of four children and you're also into media. So yeah. Mums at a the table. Mums at the table. Yeah, it's a program for mums. Um, and I, I would encourage our um, family viewing to, to check out Mums at the Table because there's a lot of resources there that you can use to, to communicate and, and reach out to your community because it's about mothers and where you're at. And, you, and we all know that mothers are the backbones of our family. So please check out Mums at the Table. Mm. The theme of tonight's program is thankfulness. And we can be very thankful to God for his blessings in the South Pacific. Fiona, what are you thankful for? How long is the show? <laughs> I've got a lot to be thankful for, Pastor Glenn. But uh, I know that, you know, having come through the pandemic um, of COVID, we, we lost, I lost my father last year to COVID. And although that is a sad thing, my mother is still alive. So I praise God for that. And I'm thankful for that because in the whole time, that tumultuous time, I knew God was with me and I know God is still here and he's still with our family. So I've got yeah. to be thankful for that. Um, Pastor Glenn, what are you thankful for? Yeah, look, Fiona, like you, I'm very thankful for family and being a part of God's family, that Jesus is my saviour, elder brother, and he's included me and I have quality of life in the family on earth, but also in, in, in heaven. And how about all of you watching the program? What are you thankful for? Please share in the chat line. We are going to start tonight's program with prayer by Lee Boy Tobias, who has come from Papua New Guinea to be a Bible worker here in Sydney. Then Pastor Clive Tefa Atal from French Polynesia is going to present our evening devotional, followed by special music from Betty Kama Adventist College in the Solomons. So sit back, relax and enjoy the program. Thank you very much. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have bring us together and we are so thankful, Father, for the South Pacific Division. Lord, from the Australian Union down to the New Zealand Pacific Union and also the Trans-Pacific Union Mission and the Papua New Guinea Union Mission, Lord, we would like to be thankful for what you have done for us for the past decade, Father. You have led our chats Lord, through thick and thine, and we have come this far. And for that, Lord, we are so thankful. Thankful for the president of the South Pacific Division, Glen Townen, and all the faculties and the staff of the South Pacific Division, down to our local missions, Father, and union, and conferences. We would like to be thankful for everything that you have done. Be with us now and always. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. Despite the troubling times in which we are living, can we really give thanks and praise to God for His many blessings and see the church's mission continue to move forward? Your online greetings, all the way from Uturoa, Rietia, French Polynesia. I'm Pastor Clive, and I'm currently the Youth Department Director for the French Polynesia Mission. Indeed, today, Reality tells us and reminds us how far we are from a peaceful 
and a better world we, lo we all long for. Nations fight to defend their interests. Crowds of people stand up to claim their, their rights and freedom. The world's natural resources diminish and its economy decline. And yet, in the midst of all of this, God's call to fulfill His mission still echoes within us. I invite you now to turn to God's Word and to rediscover an episode of the life of our early missionaries. In the book of the Acts of the Apostles, in the 16th chapter, starting from verse 11, we are told of an experience of the Apostle Paul and Silas as they entered the district of Macedonia to preach the gospel in order to expand the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. On a Sabbath day in the city of Philippi, after they had welcomed a new soul by the name of Lydia into God's kingdom through baptism, Paul and Silas were exceeded by a woman, possessed by a spirit that controlled her life and who, at the same time, had been a source of income for some people. In their frustration, the apostles simply released her from that bondage in Jesus Christ's powerful name. However, this act of relief had not been of a good taste to those this poor woman had been working for. They saw their source of income deliberately stopped short. As a consequence, Paul and Silas found themselves in trouble and arrested. Both of the Lord's servants were finally imprisoned, a hard blow on God's work. Did Paul and Silas get discouraged? Did they give up on God's ministry? Did they even curse the Lord? The Bible tells us in verse 25 that about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. What reasons did they have to pray and praise to God? We may find answers in the second half of the story. The rest of the narrative tells us that Paul and Silas were praying and singing. The prisoners were listening to them. The foundations of the prison were shaken. All the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer and his household were converted. Brothers and sisters, young people, the church in the South Pacific Division, this episode of Paul and Silas's ministry reminds us indeed of good and strong reasons to give thanks and praise to God in troubling times in which we are living. For troubling times are opportunities, yes, opportunities for the, Lord, for the Lord's church to go and to witness to people. As the Apostle Paul writes, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Troubling times are also opportunities for God to free people from the bondage of sin through our ministries as disciples of the Lord and as we spread God's truth. You will know the truth, says Jesus, and the truth will set you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. Finally, troubling times are opportunities for God to save souls from eternal death. Here we are, brothers and sisters, young people, all circumstances, may they be joyful or painful, they are reasons, opportunities for us all to continue to give thanks and praise to our Lord Jesus Christ with the assurance that He is with us always to the very end of the age as we all go and witness in his name. Amen.
the world to proclaim the love of Jesus to share of how he came he live and died. I will go to the world and let the light of Jesus shine through me and let others see that Jesus lives in me. I will go Merci, Pastor Clive, and that devotional was delivered in your third language. And Betty Karma, great music. We, we know you're good for that, but actually going and doing something and seeing that footage, wonderful. You see, this year is the 150th anniversary of Adventist education, and we can be very thankful for the work of our schools and tertiary institutions. In this division, our first school opened in 1892, the Australasian Bible School in St Kilda, Melbourne. We now have nearly 400 schools and around 81,000 students attending Adventist schools around the South Pacific. That's amazing. You know, the most amazing thing about our schools is the impact they are having on students, teachers, parents, indeed whole communities. Next, we are going to hear from Olivia Fairfax, who is going to share how her Adventist schooling changed her life. Then students from Mountain View Adventist College, my old stomping grounds, are going to talk about some of the things they are thankful to God for. I'm also going to take this opportunity to shout out to Matt. Can I do that? Matt, MacArthur Adventist College, only because they're great too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also have an update from Avondale University, which has a lot to be thankful for this past year. Not only has it achieved university status, but it's celebrating its 120th fifth birthday. And finally, we're going to hear a special 150th anniversary education song created by the Trans-Pacific Union Mission. When I was about 11 or so, I got a sudden onset of anxiety and depression. I didn't realise what it was at the time, um, but one of my teachers, my Year 6 teacher, came up to me when I was upset one day and asked me what was going on. And I didn't really know how to respond. I just said I was tired. And so a few days later, she came back to me with three CDs full of Christian music that I could play as lullabies to help me go to sleep at night. And I listened to that, those CDs for years afterwards, whenever I was feeling stressed or anxious or depressed. And um, listening to those songs, I started to get a couple of questions about God. And so I started asking lots of these questions to my teachers. And one teacher in particular, when I was in probably year 10, whenever I would ask him a question, he would admit when he didn't know the answer. And then he would go home, look up the answer and do some research and come back and tell me what the answer was the next class. And I found it very difficult to understand and get to know God as an Adventist because I couldn't see him or touch him or feel him. But I realized a few years later that it was, it was through my teachers that I got to know who God was, them going above and beyond for me and showing God's love. I'm thankful to Jesus for my family. I'm thankful to Jesus for being my best friend for the gift of life he has given me. For his great salvation and choosing me as his child. There's so many things I could be thankful for, but just to choose one thing. I'm grateful to Jesus for his love, his guidance and his strength. My teachers and 
and my little cousins. And for the support that I have around me and the love that I got from my mum. Uh, I'm thankful for Jesus because he gave me a loving family. For the opportunity that he has um, given me to uh, be a leader at this school and to have the opportunity to serve others. For my family and for everything I have. I'm grateful to Jesus for my wonderful teachers because they make learning easy and they make it fun. For the teachers and support I have in this school. For my Adventist education. I'm thankful to Jesus for Adventist education. We've received some exciting news that we want to share with you. We have become Australia's uh, newest university. You are a really important part of that heritage. One thing won't change around here at Avondale and that's uh, our sense of purpose. And it's beyond the fact that we have genuine experts in the various fields that they teach in. Many of them contributing to their area nationally and even internationally. But it's the fact that it goes a step beyond that. To have teachers who are really committed, not just to their content area, but to their faith, and weaving that faith through what they do and what they say and what they teach, I think has an impact that is really hard to measure. There's something about the opportunities here for students to jump into leadership positions, to use the gifts that they've got to really grow and shine. I saw that with my own kids where they had opportunities here they just wouldn't have had anywhere else. I had to in the end admit as a parent, you know, my kids grew much more here than I ever thought that they would. And I think one of the aspects which I really appreciate about Avondale is, is the focus on service. That, that expectation that students will leave here to serve and to make a difference. And that for me uh, is really unique and really special to Avondale. We see ourselves as being here to transform lives through Christ-centered higher education and then those students to go and transform their communities. We would like to invite you to be part of our journey, to, to follow our progress, to pray for us. We would like to continue to share what God is doing through us and we'd like to hear from you.
We forget what God has done Through the hundred fifty Education is a major tool for outreach, as are our health programs, which continue to make a big impact in our communities right around the South Pacific. Pastor Glenn, I understand you were in Fiji a couple of months ago where the 10,000 Toes campaign received a special honour. I want to hear about this. Share, share about um, this amazing award that that 10,000 Toes campaign received. Yeah, well, uh, 10,000 Toes is our intervention program for lifestyle uh, diseases, particularly type 2 diabetes. And the World Health Organization gave us award for 2020 and 2021. Wow. They had Deakin University assess all health programs in the South Pacific and 10,000 Toes won the award two years in a row. Uh, George Kwong, our Trans-Pacific Union Mission Health Director, Pastor Maveni, uh, Kao Fanonga, the President, and I received the award from the Fiji Health Minister, Dr Wanga. Um, it came with 37000 US dollars as well, and that funding has already gone back into, I think it's 14 new Live More Abundantly um, health intervention programs for type 2 diabetes. That's so amazing. go 10,000 toes. It's having huge impact in the Pacific. That's awesome. Congratulations to all involved. Next, we are going to hear from Salote Ului Lakemba, who recently participated in 10,000 Toes Live More Abundantly training, which has led to significant health improvements in her own life. Then, our South Pacific Division stewardship team have a special message for us. And finally, Ruth Rocco from New Caledonia will share a few thoughts on thankfulness. And we'd also like to hear from you. Has your church run a health activity in your local community? What was it and how did it go? Share with us in the chat line. The impact of the LMA training on its participants and their families have been significant and have been a motivating factor for them to continue and complete the full 10 weeks training. Marotaka, Talitaka, Valle, Vunabulingo, Melatanio, Vakilamanga, Nungumbula, maybe Saukina. 
ni oya o ni oya ondo tobe ona mosi ni mambo e chespe ne ya nongola duro mna bulingo samba ki vitu na kena tobe o tume na matingo olai balimbola ole sumai ya nongo mela duro mna bulingo sabu la rua nongo la duro mchuna bulingo senga talinge tarie o talibo kandua oya o ni ondo taka taka mantanga ibale Orang ni rasa ngapa lele usah order tu ngido barai dia, oya usah anda butor tu sendiri untuk kadi dia, ke untuk mother tu nasi ngapa lele dia. Orang ni tangan nak lele udah kau usah anda. Ia nongko nongko, nongko dah dah orang ni anda tu mau dah betul nongko dah dah minat tak lele ada bantu tali nak kabi. Orang ni mau dengan jasa kabi nak bantu. Aku bantu tu ni nawa cina buling kau ya, nak dah betul ngambil lele tu ni usah meja kila kena nongko boleh binak. I once heard it said. That when we realise we are blessed, we should build a longer table and not a taller fence. Emma, everybody loves a banquet feast with family and friends. And isn't it incredible that in 2020, across the South Pacific Division, more than 57,000 precious people decided to join us at the banquet table of the Seventh day Adventist Church? Yes, Julian. Church growth through baptisms and professions of faith have never been higher. I want to thank you, every church member, for your faithfulness in giving your time, your talents, your finances, and so much more to invite, welcome, and feed such a precious multitude. And thank you also for recognizing God's blessings in your life by systematically returning a faithful portion of all your income through your local church. And thank you also for creating an environment where your tithes and offerings have been used in frontline mission to win souls for the kingdom, more souls than ever before. The marriage supper of the Lamb, God's great banquet feast is coming soon. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Thank you. I'm just so thankful to God for bringing uh, me through my past life until today and I've seen him working through me, in me and out of me. And this is what I love. Since I said yes, I was going to be, and I go for him and go and help people outside, inside in church too. And I'm just so grateful because I have seen him uh, blessing me and also blessing others. And I love this. So this is why I'm just so thankful and grateful to this big loving God that we have. Merci, Ruth, and it was great to see you recently in St. Louis at the General Conference session where you were representing our church from New Caledonia. We're also thankful for our many pastors right around the South Pacific who serve our people and community. And this past year, we've welcomed a number of new pastors into ministry. And we especially want to acknowledge Pastor Connie Tonga, who is the first Australian Indigenous woman commissioned by the Adventist Church. In a minute, we're going to hear from Pastor Connie, who works as the ministry coordinator at Marmarafa College. It's a special time at Marmarafa in Perth, Western Australia, which is celebrating its 25th anniversary, as well as the construction of a new building complex. Thanks to the work at Marmarafa, we now have ordained and commissioned Indigenous pastors right around Australia. After Mamarafa, Pastor Wayne Boehm will be taking us to American Samoa via Zoom to speak with Pastor Tui Tui Liatu about their 10 days of prayer and baptism. Then we will hear a thankfulness message by Charles Ratakele from Fiji, followed by special music from American Samoa. I'm looking forward to that. How have I seen God moving at the college? Um, that's one that I can answer for what has what I've seen in the past, as well as what I what I see currently. I guess for me, where He has uh, taken a life that I, I know what it was before, and now He's He's moulding it into something that, if ever if ever you can understand what the word content, to be contented, um, I'm experiencing it. My number one priority is, oh God, I give it to you and you do it through me. 
now I'm seeing where, and I'm you know, not saying this to say it's, it's, it's anything from me, it, it isn't. It's we're allowing God to do th things with those gifts that he has given, allowing him to do it. Only then do they work, only then. Making a decision about, can I even do this? Can I do this? What if I say no? And it's like, well, Connie, if you say no, all you're doing is rejecting what God wants to do in your life. And that is, it is that go and share the gospel. From Mamarafa now, I want to take you across to America, Samoa. And Pastor Tui joins us, the acting president for our newest mission in the division. Welcome to We Are The Church. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Now, Pastor Tui, I want to talk because word has got back to us about something special that happened at the start of this year with the 10 Days of Prayer. Tell us about that program that you ran in America, Samoa. Thank you, Pastor Bowen. The 10 Days of Prayer was a time of blessing for this mission. And uh, every church participated. And uh, a focus of the 10 Days of Prayer was for all the local church to pray together for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that we can be empowered to do the work of God here in this mission. And at the end of that 10 days of prayer, uh, we were blessed with the fact that 51 souls were added into the family of God. What a great story. I'm reminded of the book of Acts that it says the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So we're certainly seeing that uh, in America, Samoa. Now, there was one man in particular. I want to ask you to share that story of that one man that came to the program. Yes, Pastor Bowen. Uh, he is a paramount chief in one of the villages in American Samoa. Uh, he first uh, heard about the truth of the second coming of Jesus and the Sabbath when he was in the United States. And upon returning to American Samoa several months ago, he joined the Bible study that was aired on our media by our uh, media team, the American Samoa uh, Adventist Media. He joined the study every night, and at the end of the study, he surrendered his life and followed Jesus. Uh, he's, he's now the one of the acting, very active deacon of the church in Genani. And uh, we, we baptized him uh, several months ago, and he is now the member of one of the newly established church in American Samoa. Yeah, what a great story. And, and I guess, you know, those 51 other people that were baptized also have similar stories of, of coming to faith and now serving in the, the local church. And that's just exciting news to see and hear what those focus on prayer did for America Samoa. So thank you, Pastor Tui, for joining us this afternoon. At we are the church and we wish you and the mission God's blessing as you continue to pray, as you continue to make disciples in your area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also for having me this afternoon. God bless you and your ministry, Pastor Paul. I'm very thankful for my church back at home. I attend the Tamovoy English Church and this church has really helped me in my spiritual work. The family, friends and relationships, the spiritual growth, the spiritual nourishment, the direction to the Lord has been really an impact in my life. And I praise the Lord for our church family, both local and global.
Lofa Pastor Tui and all those involved in disciple making in American Samoa. Great story. Discipleship remains a key emphasis of our division and discipleship activities have continued right around the South Pacific. Particularly during COVID, we had lots of small groups, Bible discovery reading, using World Changer Bibles, and those groups have expanded all around uh, our division. We are so thankful for your involvement in that. It is through discipleship activities by our early pioneers that the church has grown to what it is today. We can see an example of this in Papua New Guinea. The St. Matthias group of islands recently celebrated the 90th anniversary of the arrival of Adventist missionaries. Thanks to the pioneering work of these missionaries, the church is thriving on these islands. Next, we will be taking a look at the 90th anniversary celebrations, which were attended by the Papua New Guinea Prime Minister. Then we will head to Maida Vale Adventist Church in Western Australia to see how our nurturing culture of discipleship has influenced church growth. Finally, Pastor Danny Phillip will share a few thoughts about what he is thankful to God for. Adventists in the St. Matthias group of islands in New Ireland province, Papua New Guinea, are thankful to God for the good news of Jesus, which they received 90 years ago when a ship carrying Fijian missionaries landed on their shores. A 90th anniversary celebration was held in Lomakunauru village on Musau Island and was attended by Papua New Guinea Prime Minister James Marape. The Prime Minister received a warm welcome from the locals 
including a parade in his honor by Adventist youth. There was singing, preaching of God's word, reflections on the journey of the pioneer missionaries, and a baptism of 110 people. All those present reflected upon God's leading and goodness upon their community over the past 90 years, and they were challenged to continue the important work of the pioneers. I remember 30 or 40 years ago, this was a growing church. A few years ago, I ended up back here and it was a different story. Later Vale Church was on the decline, but fortunately for the church, we had a couple of very good prayer warriors who were praying that young families and children would start attending. I was sitting at the kitchen table with my daughter and she said, Mum, I want to instill Christian values into my children. I said, do you want me to take them to church? She said, yeah. And I was like, did God just answer my prayers? So when Kerry's grandchildren started coming to Maida Vale, and there's five of them, it, other families started coming too. So we went from something like 20 adults and two kids to, to more like 50, 60 adults and 15 kids or more. It's like a big family. Dad and I were searching for God and it was during the COVID times. We went, found a church in our local neighbourhood and at first I was reluctant as I never had a church experience before, but people were very loving, caring and made me feel at home. So growing together really helped us to be more intentional about building that nurturing culture. I think we've become more adaptable, definitely a lot more people involved, um, willing to be involved. Um, more community-minded, just more Jesus-centred. We like to thank you, Lord God, Lord, plant your church leaders where you play involved, Lord, look at you more churches. Online where you start, stand up on front line, Lord, uh, uh, multiply them disciple makers, and walk them disciples, you plant you more churches, Lord, one one corner, Lord, uh, PNG, one or two, and everywhere in the South Pacific. We like to thank you for your leadership and for your support. Lord, walk, Lord, mission, Lord, next steady walk, Lord, God, Lord, walk it up on places where you missed up, Lord, and so. Milato, thank you, Lord, suppose you're a leader or one blood church member or anyone that you plan in church or you walk in disciple. May like praise him, God, Lord, God, you see me, Lord, walk in this floor walk. We have so much to be thankful for as we look back over what God has done throughout our division over the past 12 months. But there have also been a number of challenges. We look at the natural disaster that occurred in Tonga and we'll talk with Tonga Mission shortly. But first, let's go to the flood zone in Mwollomba, North New South Wales Conference and welcome Pastor Ashley Smith. Thanks for having us, Wayne. Now, it's been a big year for you at Mwollomba Church this year. Firstly, there was your ordination. Uh, what a big Sabbath that was. Secondly, I'm watching on Facebook. You've had many baptisms take place at Mwollomba Church uh, with the school there as well. And thirdly, you've had many challenges with the floods. Describe to us the impact of the floods that you experienced earlier this year. Yeah, so the floods had a massive impact on our church community and our, I guess the broader community as well. Um, record floods, you know, in our region. So more than unprecedented. So I guess it's really motivated, really motivated the, the congregation to service in our community. Uh, when there was a very real and palpable need that could be easily met. Um, and the best way to meet that is getting on the end of a shovel and shoveling out mud of, out of people's homes. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, if, if you can't meet immediate needs in a time of crisis, then yeah, there's, there's, you can talk to talk, but you got to walk to walk in those moments. Yeah. Now the flood extended, yeah, as you say, it was bigger than the 2017, bigger than the 74 floods, which saw, you know, and for our viewers, there was 777 mil that came down in this area in, in just a, a couple of days. So, you know, you're describing the mud and the impact uh, that it had throughout the, the, the region and ex I guess extended Northern Rivers area. It was extensive. Yes, absolutely. But I think as well, like, Moments such as that, you know, actually do provide opportunities for God to 
to step in and move amongst these people. And so we, the, the church really mobilized. Like we, we had those who weren't all that mobile. Uh, we had them actually cooking meals. Um, our church got flooded. And so we had crews at the church clean up the church. We actually had church that Sabbath and we had a different type of church service. We actually had a baptism. Um, and so it would have been easy just to throw your hands up in the air and say, okay, this is all too hard. But I think when the devil knocks you down, um, one of the best things to do is to keep fighting and say, we're not going to be defeated because we're more than conquerors through, through Christ who loved us. And we had the baptism and then we sent everybody out into the community and we had 150 people on Sabbath go out into the community and shovel mud, deliver meals. We even had one, um, one of our church members on a bobcat um and it was just all hands on deck um and it was just such a beautiful way to to have have church it's we pitch it to the church and said guys we've just had worship here now we're about to go out into our community and worship again and so it was just a very powerful way to be the hands and feet of jesus in such a crisis yeah what sort of impact stories did you have of, of feedback coming from the community to see a church out serving in this way yeah, the, the, there's lots of stories. Um, we were given opportunities to pray with people, you know, afterwards. And, and not only were they appreciative of the help, but they were open to prayers. We're actually going to be following up a lot of these individuals because we actually got a log of the people that we've gone and visited. And so the beginning of August, we're actually going to be heading around and touching base with them again, seeing how they're going and all those kind of things. So, yeah, it's it's had it has had a, a massive kind of impact in terms of the God's name in the community. We come from a very new age community and just for people to, to witness and see Christians in action is, is very, I guess, beneficial for the gospel of Christ. Um, but it's also given us some inroads with some conversations and some people that we've made contact with through that process too. Yeah, what great stories. And this is, uh, I guess, a real story uh, in progress of what's happening in that area. Ashley, so we're so grateful for your ministry and the church's ministry in that area. And may God continue to bless you and the church as you serve the people of Moolumba. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Pastor Wayne. From the Northern Rivers area of North New South Wales Conference, we go now across to Tonga. And it's a joy to welcome Pastor Fanuelli to We Are The Church. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. Um, Malo Lili. And I'm happy to be part of this program. It's good to hear that heavenly language coming through, Pastor. Let me now take you back to January. January 15, I think it was, uh, Tonga experienced an, an underwater volcano. Just talk us through what happened on this at this time. Mm. Uh, on the 15th of uh, January, close to um, 6 o'clock in the afternoon or 5 to 6, uh, we could hear the um, sounds like a thunder about three times that we hit that one and uh, the last one was really uh, hit the whole nation and uh, that's caused the strong eruption uh, and then caused the tsunami that uh, affected uh, the, the whole islands, especially here in the mainland and the uh, Hapai. Now I understand that this affected 84% of the Tongan population. So this was quite extensive and the damage that ensured as a result of the the earthquake and tsunami was was significant right across the country. That's right. So, what did the how did the church respond to the crisis that you experienced at this time? Yeah, our our first response we we collected recovery stuff, uh, especially food and um, uh, other stuff like clothes and uh, and then we visited those places uh, that has been affected. Uh, uh, during the tsunami. And not only that, but when we were able to connect with overseas after almost a month, we have been connected with our ATRA department. And then we have, um, we, we, we did a guest distribution that uh, cover almost about 700 families in the whole, um, in, the, in the island, especially in Hapai, uh, Ewa, and here in Tomatapu and some other island that uh, inhabited it close to the mainland. Just got back from Ewa, and we have covered almost seven, uh, 70 family household with the guest distribution. But that's a kind of a, of response that we did as a church to the community and also the church members. So really practical help in a time of crisis. That's right. Um, 
Uh, yes, uh, not only that, but uh, our local uh, crops, we harvest our crops and share it with our members. Not only that, but we have members from overseas, they send container of uh, food and stuff. We also share it with our church members and also the uh, community. We're grateful to you and the team for the work and the ministry that you've been doing at this time of crisis there in Tonga. So please pass on our regards to everyone there in Tonga, to your team. And may God continue to bless you as you serve the people of Tonga through this time. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Wayne. Remind you that our mission compound was affected as well. Um, and uh, we just want to thank you and hope you'll continue to pray for us in our ministry here in Tonga. We will do. Thank you, Pastor. I'm thankful for the trials that I've experienced in my life because it's because of those trials that I have become the person that I am and I am in a relationship with God that is much stronger every time I overcome those trials with Him. And just like Joseph experienced many trials in his life and was um, encountered, encountered many people uh, throughout his different walks, his different situations, I too have been able to meet with people who have taught me things about God and what his purpose is for me and how to overcome those trials through their own experiences.
What a beautiful song. God has given us different and special gifts for sharing Jesus with others. And sometimes these gifts take on a creative form. Often it involves media, whether it's traditional methods like literature, distribution, radio, television or via digital platforms. Pastor Glenn, I know that you have been involved in special literature distribution activity recently. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, um, I'm a cyclist and with some cycling friends and colleagues, uh, we rode from Washington DC in uh, the US uh, from the General Conference building to the General Conference session um, in May, June uh, this year. And that would have been a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hard work. I can tell you after 180 k's, there is not one place on a bicycle you can sit that you're comfortable. But why did we do, do the ride? Well, in Australia, the work of the church started not in the cities, but in the country regions by cycling evangelists, Frederick Rieke, uh, Philip Rieke, and there were a whole lot of others. And uh, also that happened in, in New Zealand as, as well. And these people would go and sell books, um, Adventist books, Christian books, and out of their ministry, eventually churches would start. So we did it in honour of these um, pioneering literature evangelists. And so as we went, we said, instead of selling books, we will give books away. And great controversy, your Bible and you, and then a little tract um, on our, our story. So we're, we're riding along and whenever we see something, and it's the back road, so, um, you know, we didn't always come across uh, people, but when we saw somebody, we would stop. Okay. And then someone else, one, at least one or two of us would there and, and engage. And they were always interested in, in what we were doing, our accent, and, um, and we'd tell them what we're doing and why we're doing it. And they said, you're crazy. Um, and that, that kind of gave us a good segue to, to share um, the books. And I would say all of the eight writers uh, shared at least 10 books. I reckon I averaged probably 20 books uh, a day. Uh, which was amazing. And just one, one story. Um, Torben, Dr. Torben Berglin, who is the Associate Health Director of the General Conference, and Pastor Michael Worker, the Australian Union Secretary, and myself were sitting under, under a tree. We were sitting. It was really hot. We were waiting for some of our colleagues who had stopped and uh, we're talking to uh, a fellow who was mowing his lawn and they were engaged in a long conversation. So because it was hot, middle of the day, we sat down under this tree and a lady comes up in a, in a vehicle and she, she stops and she says, are you OK? And we said, yeah, we're, we're fine. She said, what are you doing? And so we told her all that we, we were doing. They said, oh, well, do, you, do you need some water? And we said, no, no, no. Um, you know, we're giving out books. And so she, she took the books and was really you know, happy about, about that. Then she drove off and um, we were still waiting and she came back and we were still under the tree. And she said, you sure you guys are okay? And we, we said, yeah. And as we got talking, she told us her story and she had just had some uh, two liver transplants, one not successful, one successful, how that stressed the family relationship with husband and kids and the finances. And she was just sharing all of this. And um, at the end of it, I said, hey, look, would you mind if I prayed for you? Mm. And she said, oh, that would be amazing. And so as we prayed with her, I just prayed for her family, for her health, for God's intervention and healing in her life. And when we opened our eyes, there were tears rolling down her cheeks. And she said, wow, I came to help you guys and give you some water, but you've just given me something. I'm going to treasure these books and I will read them. Thank you very much. And that kind of experience we had day after day, it was a wonderful time. The I Will Go bike ride.
That's amazing. Thank you, Pastor Glenn, uh, for sharing that uh, powerful testimony. Another big literature distribution campaign took place in May when more than 65,000 copies of Step Beyond were handed out in Australia and New Zealand. Next, we will hear from Jared Musk, who participated in the Step Beyond project with inspiring results. After that, we will hear about the impact of Hope FM in Papua New Guinea and the launch of Hope Channel TV in the Cook Islands. And finally, we will be hearing a thankfulness thought from Tracy Mafaleo from Aotearoa, New Zealand, after her experience at the General Conference session. And how about you? Have you ever shared literature with someone? How did they respond? Let us know in the chat line. I was approached by a friend um, that I know. He said, oh, you know, why don't you come out on, um, on the doors with me? in the local community and I thought, well, I haven't done this in a long time. And we were able to meet um, a couple at their home and we ended up starting a conversation, um, a really good one that went for over an hour. <laughs> and my wife was ringing me up like kind of an hour and a half later, where are you, you know? And we spent an hour and a half uh, with these people and I'm local to the area. I just go to the local Hillview Church. And I, um, and I almost wasn't going to go that afternoon. But, you know, Jesus knocked on the door of my heart and he said, come on, Jared, let's go. And I'm sure that Jesus knocked on the door of those people's hearts that opened up that door as well. And we ended up having an amazing meeting for about an hour and a half. Um, so <clears throat> he ended up coming to church that Sabbath. And I said, yeah, I'll meet you there. And he was there before me. <laughs> I was late. And yeah, but he stayed for the whole of church. Um, and it was just... It was great. He'd never been to a church on Sabbath before. And he's lived around this area his whole life. He knows who Adventists are and that. But it was through that meeting that he felt, you know what, I've connected with these people enough to feel like I can just walk in there. And that's what it is. It's connecting with your local community and the people that you know. Um, I know him now. I didn't know him before. And um, I hope that we can really keep uh, that friendship going. My name is uh, Lucien Gao. I was raised up in, 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 in an Anglican family. Mom and dad and my entire family are Anglican. I came across all of them through my marriage problem and my wife left me. And I, I was alone myself. And then uh, I came across uh, all of them. Uh, I had a story which convicted my life through to become an Adventist. I became an Adventist through all of them and I baptized in year 2019. After I became an Adventist, I, I feel that the Spirit of the, the, Spirit of the Lord that, that convicted me to bring my wife to introduce her to be an Adventist so both of us can walk together and listen to the Word of God as an Adventist, and we know that uh, the um, Sabbath is the true day of worship. The both of us baptized in the same year, 2019, and we became an Adventist. And just recently, I was appointed as a youth leader, so I'm happy to take out the responsibility. Oli Peterson, welcome to We Are The Church. Thank you very much, Wayne. My pleasure. Now, Oli, you care for Hope Channel New Zealand. That is correct, I do. Now, when did that start? We started at Hope Channel in New Zealand in 2015, so we've been broadcasting 24-7 uh, ever since. And that's in free-to-air homes right across New right Zealand. Across New Zealand. It's both on satellite and terrestrial networks, uh, free-to-air across the whole country. Which makes Hope Channel really unique uh, in New Zealand with it going into to homes across the country. Uh, yes, we're one of the few stations around the world that has free-to-air into every home. 
uh, not many places that they do that. Now, I understand just recently you expanded the Hope Channel network. Tell us a little bit about that. We have been in the Cook Islands ever since we started back in 2015. However, Cook Islands has had the limitation that they're only operating on a subscription model similar to Sky TV. But over there, we're looking at expanding that into free to air as well. So this will go into every home across the Cook Island Territory? That's correct. At the moment, we're doing it uh, in Aitutaki through a third party uh, that we're working together with, but we're also looking at expanding it in Rarotonga. So this is really the, the new door knocking program, the modern door knocking program we've got um, in going into lounge rooms right across the country. How are church members in Cook Islands wanting to use this as part of their discipling initiatives in Cook Islands? This is a way of continuing to break down the barriers uh, that may exist against religion, number one, Christianity, number two, but Adventism uh, maybe in particular. So uh, here TV becomes a real force in changing uh, the attitudes towards Adventists and Christian belief in general. Yeah, Ollie, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. And greetings to everyone in Cook Islands if you're watching on Hope Channel. Great to have you a part of our We Are The Church program. Ollie, thanks so much for joining us. I'm thankful for godly leaders and pastors in our South Pacific Division. I'm sharing this thankfulness just as we complete the General Conference session. I'm about to head home to New Zealand from here in St. Louis, but have had the pleasure of um, spending the week with some of our leaders and delegates who are here and who've just been really encouraged uh, by our prayer times, by the sharing and just getting to know some of them personally. So I'm really thankful to God for our leaders and our pastors in our division. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote these words to new believers in one of the first books of the New Testament. And these new believers were in the city of Thessalonica. And he's saying that they needed to give thanks in all circumstances, because this is God's will for them in Christ Jesus. He's concluding the, the letter and giving practical advice of how to keep living as a disciple of Jesus. But is it possible to give thanks in all circumstances? Well, let's look at the, the context to what um, Paul here is, is saying. From verse 16, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. And may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole body, spirit and soul be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. It seems to me that Paul is, is giving this practical advice because it's possible because of what Jesus has done and that he is going to make us blameless and we are blameless before God, uh, the, the, the Father, and that he can do things in us and he's faithful to see it happen. But it also is interesting to me that it says give thanks in all circumstances. It doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. Now, in chatting with Fiona, she shared the horrible family situation that happened for her during COVID, where her parents were taken from her and her dad passed away. And I asked her, were you thankful for that? And she said, no, not really. And I think you and I can understand that because COVID has brought lockdown. It has brought restrictions of travel and connecting with people. 
and there's been a lot of uh, flu and death and, and, you know, we've had floods and tsunamis and we're not really thankful for those things. And it doesn't say to be thankful for them, but it says to give thanks in the circumstance. And I asked Fiona, were you thankful in the circumstance? And she said, yes, because I knew that God was working and it was his good will. And I knew that I had the hope of Jesus. And when my father passed away, I, I, I cherished that hope. So even in the darkest of circumstances and, and the trials and challenges that really um, annoy us, bring heartache and, and, and pain. We can give thanks and it's an attitude. It's a choice. It's saying, I don't particularly like it and I'm not thankful for it, but I can have that positive attitude in the situation. And as, as I think about it, the circumstances that we all go through, God knows about them before us. And so he's saying, you can give thanks in all of them. And it's his will because he, he knows what's going to happen. And as we, we, we read down, it says, yes, testing will come. And we'll need to be praying a lot and, and, and there are, are challenges. But God can use the circumstances to grow us, to, to make us who we want to be because he is faithful in that. So you and I can give thanks in all circumstances because God's got it under control and it's part of that disciple uh, ship that happens within us, that God is growing us for his kingdom. And that's why I'm glad that we can give thanks in all circumstances because of Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor Glenn, for that powerful uh, message. I know it's inspired a lot of us and will help us in our journey as, um, as Christians and also in our work as disciples. Well, we hope you have enjoyed tonight's program and that it has inspired you in your walk with Jesus. Before we go, Pastor Wayne is going to share about a special workshop that is happening tomorrow. It's all about prayer and mission. Thanks, Pastor Glenn. Tomorrow on We Are The Church workshop, we'll be looking at prayer and mission and how the two relate. We'll be joined by special guests from the General Conference and also our very own Pastor Sven Ofstring, Pastor Nick Cross and Pastor Denny Phillip. We'll look at providing key resources that will equip you to help make disciples. And so we'll look forward to seeing you on the same platforms you're viewing now tomorrow afternoon. We'll see you then. I'd encourage you to participate in the workshop it will have plenty of good tips and insights. Well, we're wrapping up now with a song from Vanuatu. But before we go to that beautiful music, let's pray. Our gracious, eternal God, we just want to say thank you that you are Father of us all and that in Christ we are all brothers and sisters in our diversity we have unity and we are thankful for that. Please continue to work in each of our lives so that we can become disciple-making disciples to the glory of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
right to go, right? Yep. Action. Keep the smoke going. Remember Keepers of the Flame? It was an eight-part video series created by Adventist Media way back in 1989. It went on to be a series that was translated into 15 languages and loved by people around the world. It shared the message of the book, The Great Controversy, and gave people a glimpse behind the scenes into the conflict between God and Satan. It told the story of how men and women stood for Jesus, often giving their lives for the cause of God. 33 years later, it's time we created a fresh new series that again focuses on the message of the book, The Great Controversy, to reach a new generation. Ellen White says, I'm more anxious to see a wide circulation of this book than of any of the others that I've written. For in The Great Controversy, the last message of warning to the world is given more distinctly than in any other book. The problem we face today is many people aren't reading books like they used to. We believe the world lives in confusion, but this book gives clarity and context and truth to our lives and to the future. This is why we want to create a fresh new docudrama series aimed directly at new seekers to help them understand the world in which they live and the world that is to come. This new series will aim to encapsulate the message of the book, The Great Controversy and show how Jesus led his church throughout all the ages and will continue to do so he leads us home to be with him. Living in a post-COVID world, we need new initiatives, a fresh approach to begin new conversations. I want to thank you for your donations you made last year towards the app. This is now well into the research and planning phase. Moving forward, we want to provide you with relevant resources in the app from the book Great Controversy and the story of a crucified, risen and soon to return King. We're living in the time of the end. The message of the Seventh-day Adventist Church has never been more important to the world than right now. Please give generously to the Great Controversy Project and help prepare a people, your family and your friends for the soon return of Jesus.